Welcome back to Awesome Planet. You know, sometimes observing an animal in its natural habitat requires nothing more than a powerful pair of binoculars and good timing. However, in other instances, animals can be a lot more elusive. The Citizen Wildlife Monitoring Project is run by volunteers, basically. We use the power of citizen science to gather all of our data. These volunteers specialize in collecting data on some of the more elusive animals of this region. To do that takes a little creativity and a lot of patience. Run poles lure an animal with bait so that a motion-triggered camera can snap photos. When we're trying to figure out where to place these run poles, there are several things that we look for. We want the camera to be north facing, so that way the sun isn't going directly into the camera. So typically what you find is these two trees that are north facing. Jim Clark has been studying wolverines, a shy animal that lives mainly in the upper altitudes of these mountain ranges. When they do make their way to this run pole site, the nearby camera will fire off three photos per second. The bait station may seem to be set a little high, but there's a reason for the raised platform. Oftentimes we're checking these in the wintertime. So if you can imagine if I'm standing on top of, you know, five, six feet of snow, this is at my knees and I'm literally just going here and just clipping this in and out. When the Wolverine sees this, all he's got to do is basically hop up onto this short little pole and run out here to the end. Here on the end uh, is where we have hair snag. This frame basically funnels the Wolverine through to the end of the run pole. And you can see um, these are 30 caliber brushes, gun brushes used to, to clean guns. The DNA from the hair provides additional information for researchers. And then we can determine if the Wolverines came down from British Columbia or where exactly they originated from. Although wolverines are the focus, fresh bait can draw all types of animals like bears and bobcats. The images Jim and Aaliyah discover capture moments they'd be unlikely to witness naturally. And combined with the DNA sampling, the Citizen Wildlife Monitoring Project provides important information about the behavior of wildlife to local and state officials. We can use this information to help with the land planning process where if people say, well, there's no value to that land because, well, there's no animals there, we can have documented proof that, well, yes, there are wolves here, there are wolverines, there are bears. We have well over 20 different areas across the state that we monitor for different wildlife. We need manpower to see that happen, and so it's really great to have a, a huge workforce of people who are willing to help out. <laughs> Gail Peff and Melinda Mast are part of the workforce looking to monitor wolves in the area. The Citizen Wildlife Monitoring Project has provided a chance for them to get involved in a way they never anticipated. We actually go through training with the monitoring program and they tell us how to pick a site or what to look for when we're picking a site. It's an amazing opportunity to learn and to participate in something that is ultimately important. I wish that more people were involved because it's such an amazing way to engage with the environment in which you live. It gives you a whole new appreciation for where you are and how all of the systems connect. This effort helps everyone. The state and local agencies that receive valuable information, the animals that benefit from the resulting protection, and the volunteers that put their time and energy into a great cause. Citizen science is a great way to get the community involved and educate people who don't choose a career in conservation. And the fact of the matter is, there aren't enough scientists out there to cover the kind of territory that we would like to cover. And it's nice to know that we can take a day and actually really assist in, in forwarding that science or moving it forward with, with no technical background. I think it's about paying it forward you know, be able to help protect and maintain these forests so that when my kids grow up and hopefully my grandkids, I'll be able to hike and take them to the same places that I've been and see the same things.